<laughs> I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> um, no, I don't. And, um, and I have my gynecologist to, to thank for that. Um, when I was expecting my, my first child, um, at the age of, you know, between the ages of 21 and 22, I actually had her when I was 22. Um, one of the things that he said to me, because I was very, very clear that I wanted a natural delivery, um, which meant uh, pushing, he said to me, listen, um, you know, during, during the birth, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an episiot episiotomy. I always have trouble saying the word. Um, which I had issues with at first because I'm like, you know, why do you want to give me this cut if you don't have to? And I'm so grateful that he took the time to explain and say, look, the, the process of, of childbirth, you know, you pushing um, is obviously going to have an impact on, on the muscles in the vaginal wall. And what that will then mean is post giving birth, those muscles will be slack, they'll be much looser, and it's actually going to have an impact on your on your sex life. And he kept saying, you know, Henri, just trust me, you know, I'll do this, and what I'll do is, you know, basically stitch the muscles um, back so that, you know, the vagina remains, the vaginal muscles remain, remain tight. And it, I'm so grateful that he did, because I, I, I never suffered after that in terms of, um, you know, the sensation and, and, and you know, pleasure. Um, being felt during during sex, and again after I had my my second child, you know, he repeated the whole um, the whole procedure again. So yeah, um, it's something I'm grateful for. <laughs> no, I think maybe it's because of the fact that I lift weights, so my core is very strong. So that fortunately, no, no, I don't. Thankfully, I don't. Only when I'm laughing incontrollably, but um, no, I'm, I'm really grateful for that, yeah. I think the Kegel exercises help. You know, sneezing can be complicated more than anything else, much more than I thought it would be at this age. For the tummy tuck, yes. No. I did think about it in my younger years, but um, like I say, the older I get, I'm just much more comfortable in, in who I am, so no, I, I don't consider it at all. No, not anymore. There was a moment where I remember doctors would say, oh yeah, you could do a little bit of lipo and all that. Um, but I find that all that stuff just means so much less to me now. Hmm, I guess if I needed it, yeah, I would, why not? I mean, I'm looking forward to like another 40 years of sex. So, so far everything is working. Uh, it's like, you know, when you have a missing tooth, so you replace it. When your teeth are out of lines, you have uh, braces. I, I, I mean, yeah, I would, I would consider it if I needed it. Mm, yeah. Um, no, I don't. I don't think so. No, at least. Having said that, I, I, I also know very well that one can never say never. So, right now, the answer is definitely no. I don't. I don't see what the advantage of it would be right now. No. 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 <laughs> we sh you should have sex till when you die. We should enjoy it. <laughs> no. No. I have 80-year-old patients who are still very sexually active. <laughs> there is no age, yes. I have a, actually, I do have an 80-year-old patient who sees me regularly, we do her, you know, um, oncological screening and every other screening that she requires. But yeah, even 80 year olds, that's my oldest patient though. You know, like if we can make everything comfortable for you to be able to enjoy sex, yeah. then that's it. Yeah. yeah. So typically when women turn 40 and older, there's a lot of changes that undergo. they undergo, um, mainly depending on whether they've had a baby or not. So some of the things that can happen to them in terms of their sexual life is that they can develop um, vaginal dryness. They can develop painful sexual intercourse, something that uh, in the medical field we call dyspareunia. They can develop vaginal laxity or looseness of the vagina, especially if they've had uh, vaginal deliveries. Um, they can have low libido and difficulty in arousal. And then they can also have difficulty in achieving an orgasm. 
um, either it takes too long to achieve one or they're completely unable to achieve an orgasm. Uh, that generally is what happens from the age of 40 and upwards. My opinion is that women should see their gynecologist when they have a problem. Um, of course, we do have the annual screening that must be done, you know, for your breasts, for example, your annual pap smear. Some women prefer to do a pelvic ultrasound just to see if their ovaries, you know, have any growths or are the right size and all that. I wouldn't say there's an exact age that women should come I would say do your annual screening and then come if there's a problem or if you feel you know you want to do something you know recreationally for example something cosmetic recreationally otherwise go to your gyna when you have a problem what the <laughs> what the what the what the oh yes those new ones, you know, those uh, mamakinis? I don't know, I, that's what my daughter calls them. The ones that look like you're wearing half shorts and a more robust, supportive top. I would wear one of those, um, but yeah, not a bikini.